let's jump back into the third installment. This will be the third installment from our series from the New Testament book of James. We're calling the series Working Faith, back in the book of James. So with all that's gone on today in today's service, uh, I have in mind a short message from a short passage. Uh, so let's, uh, let's read these few verses together. Would you like to stand with me? It's probably time to get some, uh, get some blood flowing anyways. I'm not going to lead you in jumping jacks, but we can, uh, we can read these three verses together. It starts with verse 19 of James chapter 1. Just read it out loud with me. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. This is God's word. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. So how does it start? It says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Take note of this. We may have a short passage before us, but it appears to be a vitally important passage. Take note of this. Dear ones, pay careful attention, James says. Consider this. And let's apply it to our hearts and lives today. So James gets right to it. He lists three points to which we should pay close attention, right? He says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Quick to listen and slow to speak. You know, that phrase introduces another thread uh, that we'll see run throughout the book of James. And that thread is the power of speech, the power of our tongues especially the power of our speech to degrade, to degrade our lives, to degrade our faith, to degrade our testimonies. The power of speech. speech. We'll see this thread in each of the five chapters of the book of James. And of course we see this thread, <laughs> this idea of the power of speech run throughout our Bibles. James teaches that our words, our tongues, can get us into a lot of trouble. Anybody know that? Mm. <laughs> so controlling our tongue can keep us out of trouble and leads us to righteousness. So James brings our focus to this truth, a truth, like I said, that's repeated throughout our Bibles. Perhaps you've read or heard this. This is from the book of Proverbs. It says, the one who has knowledge, knowledge uses words with restraint and whoever has understanding is even tempered. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. Put another way, better to keep your mouth shut and appear stupid than to open it and remove all doubt. <laughs> this is a quote that's often attributed to Mark Twain. A slightly different version is attributed to uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, both attribution, it appears, is disputed, but what cannot be disputed is whoever said this first, they were preceded by thousands of years by what we find in the book of Proverbs. <laughs> it seems that the best discipline, the best way to keep our mouths shut is to keep our ears open. We can't do a good job of listening when we're talking, right? And by listening, I mean truly listening. You know, there's all kinds of different listening. I'm not talking about merely listening for the sound to stop so that you can jump in and say what you want to say. <laughs> I mean, listening, not merely listening so that we know what we're going to say next. Anybody guilty of that? I do that. I do that all the time. <laughs> Truly listening leads to learning and understanding. 
Uh, I know that some people describe themselves, I've actually heard some of you describe yourselves as out loud thinkers. Could it be that out loud thinkers only want to learn from the one who is talking? Themselves. <laughs> says the one with the microphone, yeah. Listening to people lets them know that we care, right? I mean, we can tell people we care, and I suppose it's easy to think that the best way to let people know that we care about them, and the best way to let people know that we care about what they're thinking is to tell them. But the, way, the better way is often not to tell them, the better way is often to listen to listen to them. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Just as speaking and listening uh, are connected to wisdom and foolishness <laughs> in the Proverbs, so is speaking connected to anger. We read that in Verse 27 of Proverbs, the one who has knowledge uses words with restraint and whoever has understanding is even-tempered, not angry. <laughs> Friends, uncontrolled anger leads to uncontrolled speech. And uncontrolled speech leads to all sorts of problems. <laughs> we know that to be true today and it has been true throughout human history. Uh, you know, from time to time, a little side note here. From time to time, we might hear someone make a common error when it comes to interpreting Scripture. Yeah, the error is this. It's always poor interpretation when someone asserts that those who originally penned the words and those who originally heard or read the words did not really understand, did not fully understand, they couldn't understand uh, because God really put that in the Bible for us in 2019. In fact, he put it in the Bible for us in 2019, us Americans, maybe for us living in Kirkland, we tend to make things very, very centered on ourselves when interpreting the Bible. I mean... I've heard a few actually say such things. You know, those original writers and hearers, they really didn't understand what they were doing because they couldn't understand it because they didn't have the perspective, the enlightenment that I am bringing you today here in 2019. <laughs> I've heard some people say such things, but many imply it, often imply it. Now, listen, friend, of course, God's word is for us today. But it has been for all of those who have preceded us <laughs> throughout the centuries, certainly including the original hearers, the original readers of the words. The better approach to interpreting Scripture is that, of course, the original writers and hearers understood, having all the knowledge and experience and perspective that they needed to understand, perhaps, I would even say, more likely, they understood it better than us because it was originally written in their language, in their culture, in their contexts. Now, of course, there may be different implications. There may be different applications, but it always means what it's always meant. Scripture is always relevant to our times. Scripture is always relevant to our current circumstances, our place both in history and in geography. <laughs> but Scripture is never relative to our times and circumstances. Relevant, yes. Relative, no. It may apply differently in our times, but our times, our knowledge, our experience never changes or even completes the meaning of Scripture. Thus, thus endeth my speech. But with all that said, <laughs> with all of that said, while these words penned by James to the early church meant all that it means, <laughs> while the original church understood it all and could apply it, when he wrote, 
Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. They understood it, but consider this. They didn't have social media. (laughs) They didn't have social media or satellites or 24-7 cable news. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Perhaps we should post that verse on our computer monitors and phone screens or or wherever we interact with our email or our Facegram or our Twitterers or whatever it is. (laughs) I mean, it may be one thing to control ourselves in person right? But it seems way too easy to adopt an alter ego online. Any of us guilty? Anyone? I know I have been from time to time, and I know that some of you have as well, because I follow you online. (laughs) I consider consider it an important part of my pastoral duties and responsibilities. I don't know how what anyone could pastor without InstaFace or whatever it is, right? <laughs> I'm looking in. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to have a James 1.19 filter on our devices? Ah, I know such a thing would have kept me out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, we can control ourselves. We can. We can listen better. We can be slow to speak, and of course, we can control our anger. We are more than sophisticated animals, friends, (laughs) more than our (laughs) hormones. We are more than the synapses firing in our brains. And when we believe, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit to govern our behavior, to control and conform our emotions if we'll only lean into it. We can control ourselves. Now we might ask, what about righteous anger? Right? What about righteous indignation? Holy anger, if you will. I suppose there is such a thing. But I would warn about that. Anger is dangerous. Ephesians 4 warns about anger. It says, in your anger, do not sin. Apparently quoting from Psalm 4. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. When there is anger, at the very least, get rid of it quickly. Right? Be slow to anger and quick to be not angry. (laughs) Get rid of it quickly. Why? Because it is a favorite tool of the devil. A foothold to latch on to. Some of you are nodding your heads. You know what I'm talking about. A favorite tool of the devil. A foothold to latch on to so he can climb up and see something even more prized. Like our hearts and our minds. our emotions, our souls. So while the Bible makes limited room for anger, what's called for far more is along the lines of grace and charity, forgiveness, love, mercy, kindness, self That's what's called for far more. Even our righteous anger is not what God desires. In my observation, we often fool ourselves with what we might think of as righteous anger or righteous indignation. It just seems to me that a lot of righteous anger is just mostly anger. (laughs) Right? It's just mostly anger, not based much in righteousness at all, but more in in fear. 
or hate or jealousy and such. Yeah, I find as best as I can that I am generally best off if I leave anger, vengeance and such to the Lord. <laughs> Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. <laughs> I want to leave the anger to God as best I can, since only his anger, only his anger is truly righteous. <laughs> only God's anger is truly righteous. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Righteousness, right living, that which pleases God is not rooted in our anger. And it's not even rooted in our words. It's rooted in his word. It is his word that saves us. The gospel of Jesus Christ, this is our righteousness. His word. And our right response to his word, our right reaction to his word, uh, our right response to his word, his righteousness that saves us is to do righteousness as best we can. Getting rid of filth and evil. Setting aside anger and empty talk. And this puts us on the path of doing righteousness, pleasing God and glorifying his name. And for more about that path, tune in next time. <laughs> and the times after that as we work through the book of James because that's really the point of the book of James we could talk about it this way we could put it along these lines rather than giving in to that alter ego that we might let out online or in our speech consider an alter ego see what I did there with the A and the E Right, that alter ego, that other angry one, that uncontrolled one, that alter ego can, can be transformed into an alter ego, an ego that is, is subject to, controlled by God, an ego, a personhood a personality that is filled with and driven by, marinated and demonstrating the Holy Spirit at work, at work an alter ego, if, we, if, we, if you will. We, we come to God, presenting our frailty and failing to him, allowing him to transform us, taking our brokenness, and demonstrating his glory, taking our pain and revealing uh, his goodness, taking our weakness and, and, and somehow building our faith. We lay aside our words and emotions and we look to his word and his spirit to change us. God, make it so. Make it so. Friends, today is a day to believe. Today's a day to believe, to believe the gospel, that Jesus loves you, loves me, loves us, paid the price for us to be with him in eternity. Those who believe are his forever. This is the promise of the Bible. We heard it preached effectively before, that all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved this is a day to believe and call on the name of the Lord, to believe the gospel. It's a day to believe and be forgiven and a day to believe and to forgive. It's a day to believe and to ask God to help us and change us, to, to take his word and by the power of his Holy Spirit, apply it to our lives in such a way that we are transformed Transformed in real ways that we can see and know and transformed in real ways that others see and know and demonstrate the goodness, the power, the grace of God in our lives. Friends, today is a day to believe. And can I call you to prayer just for a moment and let's believe together. Father, thank you for your word. 
Thank you for the power of your word combined with the power of your Holy Spirit, the same spirit that, that, uh, that inspired this, the word of God lives in us now, is in our midst to apply it to our lives. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is applied to our lives so there is less dying and more living in our day to day. Lord, we believe, help us to believe. Lord, where there is anger, help us to turn that thing around. Where we've so routinely given given our enemy a foothold in our life. Lord, give us grace. Give us conviction. Give us power to, to turn that way around. Lord, help us to be quick to listen. Slow to speak. And slow to become angry. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Help us, God, to, to see your word planted in our lives. That seed flourish uh, in and through our lives. So we commit these moments to you again, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. What a day, huh? Good day to be with us. I, uh...